Hello and welcome back to Ride Rescue. In the last couple of episodes I've been working on these front fenders trying to get them smooth. I uh, had some big rust holes that I had to cut out and replace some metal in. Uh, I had some waves that I had to work around. I had some lead I needed to work around. I had some surface rust that I needed to get rid of. Uh, a lot of small dents and waves that I needed to get smoothed out. I've got all of that done now finally and I can start spreading some mud. So, through the, this episode, I'll, I'll put a skim coat over all of the areas. Hopefully it's just one thin skim coat. Uh, I'll use a long board on the big areas so I can flatten them out. Uh, that will show me if there's any low spots or any high spots. But you'll see some of the techniques that I've learned over the years. I'll share those with you. I like to do big long areas instead of just concentrate on some small areas. Uh, you waste a lot of filler that way, but you get your best finishes too. I'm not going for a real high-end show finish again. Um, I mentioned that before in my videos, but I do want to have a good high-quality finish and make it look like these were coming out of an old Pontiac warehouse. <laughs> the one fender uh, I mentioned in my other videos, I would have tossed this fender and started over if I could have found something different. But it was a, a good opportunity for me to walk you through all the, the areas and the problems that you can run into with these old cars. Now, this is a 60 year old car <laughs> and uh, it does need a lot of work. Well, we've got everything sanded, <clears throat> everything's scuffed and smooth. We we'll want to uh, use a good surface wash, wax and grease remover uh, to clean up all the areas that we're going to be spreading filler on so that we get a good bond. You can use a sheet of corrugated cardboard like this piece, um, but the first time you use it, the filler is going to soak into the surface and uh, you do run the risk of having hard spots and lumps and not having it really smooth. I've used this piece a couple of times already when, when prepping other panels, so it's got a good sealer on it now, so I'm not concerned with it happening with this piece, but wax paper, parchment paper might be a better thing to use or even a sheet of uh, metal. <clears throat> I'm using uh, Rage Gold. Um, it goes on really smooth. It has a longer working time for, for spreading before it sets up. And uh, it also is really good for sanding. So that initial sand will plug up your sandpaper with some of the lesser expensive fillers. Uh, with a high quality filler like this, you spend a little bit more money on it. But it does give you more working time and a, a much smoother flowing surface. Um, instructions are on the lid. For, for a puddle this size and this thick, um, according to the instructions, the best thing to do, and what I've had really good luck with, is to just run a bead all the way across for a puddle this size, which is four to five inches. As you get into six inches to eight inches, you might want to put another half a bead onto the puddle. I want to mix it up thoroughly with just holding it and kneading it. And if you get too vigorous, you get bubbles and then you'll get pinholes in your work. So try to avoid really working in any air. And just, just fold them need and fold the need so you got a good consistent color. The temperature in my garage today is fairly cool. 
probably about 65 degrees. So I can work filler a lot longer in that temperature. As you get into warmer temperatures, it sets pretty quickly. So if you spread it out, the heat of hydration will slow and it does give you a longer working life. Uh, in these temperatures, I shouldn't have any problems. For the initial coat, this most likely will take two coats since it is pretty rough. I'll put on a first coat and this area in here is where that forklift mark was. I'll want to put a, a thin coat over all of this area too so when I get back to the second coat then I'll fill the rest of that area. But for the first coat this looks like it went on very well. that set and then I'll work on the next coats. I've got the uh, filler all spread out. Two coats in this area and uh, just one coat in uh, the area where there was just a few little dings and dents. Once I block this down most of this filler um, will be out of the panel. Um, it will just be a skim coat. Confident with using a straight edge that the panel is pretty smooth to begin with. By adding two coats, I can make sure to really level this out with the longboard. The filler is good and dry, but not too dry. Um, the sooner you can get to, to sanding without really gumming up your paper, the better. Um, sanding it while it's still curing does make it a lot easier to sand. If they wait 24 hours, it's, it's pretty well set. But, uh, I prefer to get on it right away before it is set too hard. What I'm using here on my long board is 80 grit. It's a, a P80. Just go straight across, you're going to have high and low spots. So by running this across, 
and I guarantee a much better, smoother surface. Valleys and bunny lines like these, this is where a longboard really helps out so you can keep those crisp lines. If you were doing it with, with a smaller sanding block or even one half this size, not going to get as perfect of lines. A lot of the lower end fillers will uh, gum up your paper pretty quick. It's sticky. With the higher grade filler like this one, you can see I'm not gumming up my paper and my sandpaper lasts much, much longer. So it's, it's worth the extra expense to buy a good quality filler. You can start to see some shiny metal. We probably have a little bit of a low spot right here. But uh, we'll keep sanding it. And, uh, start to see more. The valleys like this have a tendency to build up a little heavy when you're spreading the filler. Just the nature of going back and forth across it. So I'll concentrate on thinning this out because it is, it is pretty thick. I end up uh, doing most of this area with one coat. It was a couple areas, little uh, low spots. Uh, had to put in a second coat. The forklift damage area and the groove where the trim goes, I ended up with uh, a third coat to finally get the lowest spot. There was a low spot right in here. Um, two coats in that area, and you can see all of the, the lower fender area. I put one coat and the uh, Sanded it. I could tell there was going to be a low spot, so I put a second coat. And you can see where I'm starting to go through while I'm sanding. As I start hitting metal, getting down along the edges, then I know I don't have any low spots. And then I just keep sanding until I don't go too far and end up with high spots where that bare metal is. So overall this has a fairly thin coat. In this low valley where the forklift had bumped it, just low enough that I did put a filler down the middle of it. And in order to sand that, I commandeered the handle off of my broom and this ends up being the perfect fit in that groove. It's just a half round. And sand that until it's smooth. And Fender's finished. And there we go. This fender is ready for primer. I have two coats pretty much over most of the surface of this fender. Um, it does look like a lot of filler, which it is. Um, it's about a half a gallon of filler. But once it's all sanded off, 
about 80% of that filler will be on the floor. It's just mostly used as a skim coat, but to, to get the highs and lows and to really flatten it out and level out the way I want it, um, I've even gone so far as to completely coat the fender when I'm doing the show finish so that I can block down with a long board and make it as flat as possible. But like I say, the majority of this filler will be on the floor in powder. It'll be most of it sanded off. Looking good. Finally, just about finished. Had to just add uh, another coat. Um, had a little bit of a low spot right here. But overall, I'm really happy with this fender and how it turned out. Man, did it kick my butt. In the words of the wise Ronald Weasley, bloody, this fender was difficult. It was probably about 18 to 20 hours of straightening and welding and filling on this panel. If you go by uh, the shop time, typical shops charge about 75 to 85 dollars an hour. You're looking at 1800 to $2,000 worth of bodywork on this fender. Pretty uh, expensive fender and it's not even painted yet. Feel great that it's finished. Now that everything is smooth, I've taken the time to take the gloss off of all the red paint that is left. Uh, make sure that I've got a good bond for the primer to stick to. I I've set it up on some sawhorses where I can get from top to bottom easy as I prime it. I'll put a good two coats of primer surfacer on all of the surfaces. It's a, a primer surfacer that bonds uh, to all the metal as well as the filler and paint. It's a two component primer surfacer with hardener. Thank you for watching my video. If you would, give me a like. If you like what I'm doing, please subscribe if you haven't already. Every little bit you can help me out on subscriptions and likes and comments. Uh, just gives me an opportunity to, to put more work into my channel and, and do more content. I've got other builds I'd like to do, so hopefully it works out. Thanks again for watching. Goodbye for now.